Um, the geolocation that we're going to do is a little bit different from the geolocation that we've done in previous YouTube videos for you in that we're going to be looking at social media, people, social media. Yeah. And in Oceans, we do that for a number of reasons. Uh, first off, maybe we want to find out where a person is. Maybe they're a missing person or maybe we're interested in them as kind of a uh, interesting person for law enforcement. Maybe we're trying to look at what's happening in an area of the world. Maybe there's a protest, a riot, a natural disaster that we want to to investigate. So what I thought we would do is head over to Twitter. Uh, Twitter is a very big international social media platform. And as you can see, I'm not signed in or anything. Everything that I do today is 100% free and 100% open without accounts, which is one of the best things in OSINT. We have access to all these things. And do you, re do you recommend, I, I think you used this term previously, a socket account or something. Do you recommend, can you explain what that is and, you know, why you'd use it? I don't want to take you on a tangent, but just thought of it now. Oh, no problem. So within open source intelligence, we many times need to get onto social media platforms that sometimes require us to create a research account or, as you call it, a sock puppet account. Those accounts are real accounts in the platform, but ones that we control that are not mapped to back to our personal details. So on a platform like Facebook or VK, I would create a an account there that's a valid account that would not be in Michael Hoffman's name so that I can gain access to the data I need for my customers. Here on Twitter, on Strava, on some of the other sites that we're dealing with, you do not need a research account or a sock puppet to log in to gain access to this data. The data is just public. So let's take a look. Now, my goal here is to access that geotag data. Uh, geotag data is simply when you have your mobile device and you tweet out something or you post something, you tell it to record your GPS location, or maybe in some uh, platforms you are going to be doing like check-ins. And those check-ins are where you say, hey, I'm at this location. Those are recorded along with your posts or tweets or whatever it is on that platform. With Twitter, they actually have an option for people to opt in to share their geolocation. Also in your profile on Twitter, you can look for, uh, you can insert in certain details. So if I go to, actually instead of my Twitter, let's go to OSINT Curious just to show you. So OSINT Curious says that it's US based and international focused right here. Now, sometimes they'll actually have, the, and the, the accounts will actually have their real location, real city, and that can be searched on as well. Let's go ahead and just take a look at how we access geo data on Twitter. It's actually quite simple. Um, first thing to do is get a latitude and longitude. I'm going to I'm over here in my Google Maps and I'm going to pick a place in Singapore. Now, the way that the geotagged information works on Twitter is that you essentially put a pin in a map, say at this latitude and longitude, I want this amount of space. I want one kilometer radius around this point. Grab all of the geotagged information from that. So what I'm going to do is grab a latitude longitude. I'm over here in Singapore and I've got a latitude and longitude right up here in the URL. And that latitude and longitude, I can just plug right into Twitter using a special term. But I kind of want to limit the results. I don't want every, all the tweets that are geotagged in Singapore. I just want tweets that are within maybe three kilometers or three miles of a certain point. So what we can do is use another tool. There are many tools out there that will allow you to pick a point and then draw a radius, a circle of a certain radius um, on a map. I'm choosing mapdevelopers.com. And if we go in here to Singapore and we zoom in to like the marina area, we can create a new circle, move it over here, and then we can change the diameter of it or the radius of it. Um, so that it just has the area we want. Now, picture this, maybe there's a protest or rally. Over in Singapore, they just legalized, um, I think, gay relations. So, you know, a lot of people are out there and happy in the streets and stuff. We can put a point in the map and say within one mile of that point, um, I want you to uh, tell me what's in there. And we look to see if the, our targets are in that area. Okay, well, here we've got the Marina Bay 
Sands Hotel. We've got Boat Key. All right, this is good. So if that's what that's where we want, then over in the other map, we're going to put our point right there on that area, right here. We're going to put it right there, and then we're going to take this latitude and longitude. Do so you have to do all that? It helps, especially if you're trying to get a very tight area like David. If there's a building that some people work in and you want to see if people are tweeting with geolocated content from inside that building, we can specify a building and then a very tight radius circle. To peop a lot of people don't turn off their geolocation. Is that right? That's right. Well, actually, it's the opposite. To do geolocate and to do geotagging of your tweets, you have to opt in for it. It is off by default. So people would wow. have to opt in. And there are certain reasons why people want to do that, uh, which are frankly beyond me. Uh, but <laughs> you know, a lot of people do that. So let's take a look at this. So we go over to the search. We type in geocode colon, paste in that latitude longitude. And then what we need to do is tell it how big of a radius around that. Let's go ahead and hit comma one kilometer. You could also do one uh, one mile or five miles or whatever. In fact, let's let's just make sure that we get a good listing here. We're going to do five kilometers. And what we see are geotagged tweets that are within this area. And I'm going to hit latest here. Again, I don't know what's coming up, but here we have a Singapore strategy session and more. If there was a protest or a riot or a rally or something else going on, natural disaster in this area, what we might see here are photos from around that area, and it could help us assess the situation. Now, some of these things may not be safe for our audience here, but you can see that we are targeting that area. This is actually helpful in certain uh, situations within open source intelligence. The other thing that people like to do is, well, let's Let's follow one person and see where they're tweeting. So instead, and so David, if you were going around the world tweeting out with your geo tagged on, your yeah. geo tagged on, could we figure out where you go, and where you tweet? To do that, what we're going to do is we're going to switch to even a different tool. It just amazes me that people, um, I think, I don't know if it's education or if it's just wanting to share. People like uh, want to overshare. It's, um, it's, it's interesting that people set that on. Oh, absolutely. It, it's uh, it amazes me. And as as we go through this, this uh, uh, today's today's video, you'll see that there are a lot of people that share a lot of very sensitive things. And some of them don't realize that they're set sharing sensitive things until we aggregate them and yeah. analyze. OSINT is, is about gathering, but it's also just as much about analyzing it and, and figuring out what it means.